Hello and welcome to Planet Waves TV for Sunday, June 26, 2016. My name is Eric Francis Coppolino here with an update about Mars Stationing Direct. This event, which has had so much build up to it, especially if you've been reading Planet Waves, it's one of the main topics we've been covering for the past three, four months, uh, takes place on Wednesday. The exact time of that would be, pardon me, that would be Wednesday, June 29th, 2016, at 7.38 and 20 seconds p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Again, 7.38 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Now, um, Mars retrograde is a process. First of all, uh, Mars is retrograde the second least of all the planets. We've, we've all heard of Mercury retrograde, right? Well, all the planets go retrograde, and the inner planets, Venus, Mercury and Mars have a distinct feeling to them. Now, Mercury is retrograde a lot. It's, I think, retrograde like 18% of the time, and, it, and it's retrograde um, three times a year. So we're constantly being reminded of the, the retrograde of Mercury. We're always somewhere in the cycle near a retrograde happening, and uh, it's just part of the normal kind of ebb and flow of life, um, maddening though it may be at times. Um, when uh, when other inner planets go retrograde, particular v Venus and Mars, it happens less frequently, so we're less accustomed to it. And these are more distinctive events. There's something about them that that makes it a special event. Uh, all, all the Mercury retrogrades are different, but it happens so often that we're used to that. The Mars and Venus retrogrades are are uh, really really different, and uh, each one has a distinct thumbprint, you might say. Now, uh, Mars is a, an especially unique retrograde in that Mars is only uh, actually in retrograde motion 10% of the time. Uh, that is to say approximately 72 days out of every two years. Now, Mars is really close to the Earth, and so it's tracking uh, the Earth's orbit very closely for most of its orbit. Uh, and, and so... Um, the one effect of that is that there is a long, drawn-out process involving Mars retrograde when it happens. Just to give you an idea of all the important stops in the process, I just uh, work the I just work them out using uh, IO Sprite. It is an eight-month process. Just to give you an idea of uh, you know what what this involved. Mars entered Scorpio on on one three sixteen. Not officially part of the process, but. Uh, because this was a Mars retrograde involving Scorpio, the sign uh, that that Mars rules, night nighttime sign, Mars rules, uh, we'll count it. Mars entered shadow phase on February 17th. Uh, it, it went retrograde on uh, April 17th. It made its opposition to the sun, the midpoint of the whole process on May 22nd. It entered uh, Scorpio back in Scorpio, in re I've forgotten a few things here. Uh, no, it entered Scorpio, right? It retrograded back into Scorpio on Feb on May 27th. It stations direct on Wednesday, the 29th. It goes back into Sagittarius on August 2nd, and it leaves shadow phase on August 22nd. That's a lot of steps in the journey. It's more than we need to cover now, um, but I, I wanted you know to let you know that there's that there's this whole process involved. There's this whole journey involved. Now let's look at this from a thematic standpoint. Um, what what I called this theme out to be way back at the beginning. And by the way, I've done a a reading about this half an hour per sign. So if you want want information about how this influences your particular zodiac sign, I'm super good at these readings. If you're doing what's called public astrology, uh, where you actually get a reading, uh, it's it's. Excellent. Anyway, uh, the theme that I called out at the beginning of this was that we have Mars, the planet of desire, involved. First, so first of all, everything we're talking about here involves Mars and all the themes of Mars. The themes of Mars involve wanting. They involve sex. Because it's Scorpio, it, in, it involves sex also. And there's an odd thing about Mars being a violent influence. And so we have in uh, astrology is a reference to Mars being about the desire to have sex, but it's also about 
killing. Now, uh, we know this from the word Tuesday, T-U-E-S-D-A-Y. In French, that's called Mardi, Mars Day. Um, but in, in France, if you look at the cigarette pack warnings, they say Fumer Tu, really super big letters. Smoking kills. And the two is the same as the two in Tuesday. So to uh, Mardi in France is also... Uh, the, 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 we get a lot of uh, language pile up between Mars being about killing, being about uh, violence, basically. And this fits a, a, a theory, a psychological theory, uh, that, that this guy I keep talking about named Marshall McLuhan pointed out, that one of the ways we seek identity is through violence. And Mars, especially in its incarnation as the ruling planet of Aries, is about warfare. It's about uh, it, it's it's about kind of a, a, ambushing and weaponry, and it's a kind of a martial planet. I mean, martial Mars uh, is is the root of the word martial, and so there is something inherently sexual and inherently violent about Mars, and we see that straddled between the sexual aspect of Mars in Scorpio and the aggressive, assertive, violent aspect of Mars in Aries. So we're seeing all of the above uh, happen right now. Now, we are also in this really rare moment where there's a kind of a perfect storm that is unique in all the world. Uh, part of why it's unique in all the world is there's planets that have never been tracked till now, one of which is a planet called Eris, way, way far from the sun, about 558-year orbit, more than twice as long as the orbit of Pluto. It's orbiting our sun. It was discovered in 2005. It was named in 2006, and Eris is in Aries for 121 years. It's still got quite a long way to go in Aries. And I want to show you what that looks like. I used this uh, graphic my, for the, the um, England, the England vote, uh, one, and I'm going to use it again, and then I've got an, another one right beneath it. So, first of all, the long period astrology, the big astrology that we've got, how do you do this? Big astrology that we've got going on right now involves the conjunction of Eris, which has been in Aries since around 1925, Uranus, which has been in Aries since about uh, 2010, and Ceres, which is moving very quickly, and uh, has just entered Aries and is in a conjunction to Uranus and uh, and Eris right now. So there's a triple conjunction going on of a super slow mover, a slow mover, and a fast mover. Uh, you, uh, this bit series goes around in four years. Then we have a super fast mover. That would be Mars. Mars is a two-year orbit. It does this big retrograde drama every every two years, making astrologers have to actually think about what they're doing for a second. But uh, still in all, it, 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 it orbits the sun rapidly. So it would be what's considered to be a fast mover. All the inner planets, I would say, out to Jupiter would be considered fast movers. All right. But what's happening is we get this really unusual alignment of Mars in, uh, in late Scorpio, making a quincunx, 150 degree, let me just put the number 150 here, five signs, it, it connects five signs of the zodiac, 150 degree aspect from here to this uh, conjunction, uh, this triple, this in nearly impossible, rare triple conjunction Mars is stopping and pointing right to it. It's as if it's saying, hello, I'm going to make this into an arrow. Mars is pointing right to this conjunction, so it's saying, there's my little arrow that I've added. It's saying, if you want to know what this Mars stationing direct in Scorpio is about, well, think about what it's making an aspect to. It's making an aspect to this extremely rare uranus eris conjunction. Now, what I've been saying about the uranus eris conjunction um, for for weeks and and uh, there, there there is still an article on top of planetwaves.net click to the click through to the main page go in through planetwaves.net go click to main page and you'll see it's an article called Uranus Eris and the Riddle of the Internet and one of the ideas I've been working with with the assistance of the McLuhans is the idea that the internet is uh, throwing the whole concept of personal identity and 
uh, your relationship to your body into complete chaos. Um, one of the ways I've been saying this is that the internet is creating a kind of an in invasion of the astral plane that is completely swallowing physical reality. Now, physical reality, most places, is lived in the wider context of the internet. So you could say, sure, we live in the world, but who leaves the house without one of these things? Maybe, maybe there's some like, you know, 80 year old guy who's just not interested. He he rather have his notebook like me but um most of us leave the house with some kind of a, a portable device ipad ipod laptop iphone droid something like this and we now live physical reality in the context of the internet not the other way around the internet used to be in the context of physical reality oh, there's a computer. I will find an internet cafe and I will t type an email to my mother and leave and only rack up 10 minutes on the thing. Now it's like, you know, 50 text messages, 50 emails a day and, um, you know, doing research on the fly, zip, 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 meeting your boyfriends and girlfriends and so forth on the internet. Life is lived in the context of the internet. The internet is an astral reality. And what this is doing is you might say, one way to say it is it's taking us out of body, but the other thing that it's doing is shifting our relationship to our physical body. The shifting of the relationship to the physical body connects to a shifting of, of our relationship to identity, and there is a kind of identity meltdown going on. For someone approximately the age of like 20 to 30, the statement I am is a very different statement than someone who is, say, for example, between 40 and 80 years old saying I am. It is a completely different statement. The statement I know is a different statement if you are on the younger side of that, because the statement I know for a younger person is uh, basically because of the Internet devoid of contextual knowledge. Contextual knowledge is not an inherent thing. If you're over a certain age and you learn most of what you learn from books, then you are all about contextual knowledge. And so there's been a threshold of contextual knowledge. But the biggest context of all, your ability to say, I am, and your relationship to your physical body, that context is completely changing. There is a meltdown of identity going on. And this meltdown of identity is, I think, leading mainly to, well, two or three things. One of which is a lot of confusion. A lot of confusion about the nature of the world, a lot of confusion about the passage of time, what it takes to get things done, and so forth. Uh, additionally, there there is the, um, the this kind of... Uh, complete scattering of reality that is, is going on. And this scattering of reality with its scattering of identity is leading to increased searching for identity through conflict and through violence. Most of the conflict and violence that we're experiencing is vicariously. And so this lack of, uh, of, of like a clear sense of I am is very often for a great many people being met by f taking their kids to see films where all that happens in the movie is things get blown up. I, I, I could not for the life of me understand why uh, there is so much bizarre emphasis on movies about people getting shot and things getting blown up. It's like the only kind of movie that besides like, you know, the occasional cutesy Disney film. Uh, besides that, it's all murder and mayhem. Well, what's that about? And what's all the like zombie thing and this this TV show that's on like once a week where all that happens is like there's like a soap opera set amongst zombies getting shot like and don't they ever run out of bullets or who do they have zombies working in the bullet factory what is going on well there is something about the vicarious the, the need for vicarious violence very few people will go out on the street and shoot people but we might want to and the way we get that out of our system or maybe dig it in deeper is to watch TV shows and movies where there is violence and this is to me uh, about seeking identity. However, however, there's one extra main way to seek identity and that is through sex, S-E-X, sex. And we can see from the world that most of the uh, the identity drama in in the world and in the in the world of like politics, both left and right, is a lot of, of, of assertion of, I'm heterosexual, I'm gay, 
I'm bi, I'm trans. Not so much bi, pardon me. That's that's another, we'll do another YouTube about what happened to bisexuality. Where did bisexuality go? Well, there's mostly, at this point, there's straighter than straight, gayer than gay, and trans. Okay, so there's a lot of asserting identity, and the people who are against the ability of gay people to get married, they are asserting identity, and they often assert that identity violently. Others are asserting their identity as being gay. Now it is the best way in the world to assert some element of identity is just to declare yourself lesbian or gay. You may be that way, you may be going through a phase where you're experimenting, but it is strongly rooted in the need to be able to say, I am blank, fill in, fill in the blank. Now, uh, I think this too, in in many ways, is vicarious. I, I think that uh, the part of the identity scattering, ident uh, out of out of body type thing of the internet, is a confusion of the body's role in sex, the role of feelings, the role of hormones, the role of emotions, uh, the the role of uh, intimate interrelating. Now let's look at how this looks in the astrology chart, and. Um, I may have mentioned that, you know, I've been concerned about the ephemeral nature of the Internet, so I thought I'm going to use thicker graphics just to make the Internet to be more durable. Okay, so here we have, this is really the way to, to, to show this aspect. Uh, the, the, the thing we're focusing on right now, let's just make sure this, this sound is still good here on the almighty KSM32 microphone, um, is Mars stationing direct in uh, in in Scorpio, right? That's that's meaningful because Mars is a planet associated with Scorpio, and, and it is, uh, the, let's say, the nocturnal. It is the sexual aspect of Mars uh, that is expressed through Scorpio, and we have Mars spending a heck of a lot of time in Scorpio this year, months in several different phases in Scorpio, uh, gathering up that energy of Scorpio that it's then going to take around the solar system for the next two years. Uh, until the next Mars retrograde happens. Let's just find out when that happens. Mars retrograde station. Mars goes retrograde again next in 2018, and it is retrograde in Aquarius. That's interesting. There's going to be a whole thing about group identity there, complemented by the fact that uh, Chiron will be in Aries. That is for a future edition. Okay, so in this next go-round, between now and 2018, when Mars goes retrograde again, we have something... Um, about sexual identity that's really crucial. Uh, and, and, and by sexual identity, I'm not talking about declaring yourself something. I'm talking about what you feel from the inside out. And, and that tends to defy definition uh, in, in the sense of um, easy, kitsch, pat ability to, to, to say, oh, now I'm this. That's much more psychologically and spiritually complex. If you are, uh, if if you are a person who's identified as being heterosexual, and you start to discover bisexual feelings, right? You start to have. It's not that you want to like fall in love with and marry everyone of the same sex, but you start to get the sensation of wanting uh, to experiment with sex and emotional contact with people of the same sex. This can be profound. It, it can be this, uh, you know, really intense experience of. Oh my God, who am I? Only it's on this visceral cellular level and it, it can uh, lead to this sense of your whole identity kind of melting down. And this is one of the reasons why there's so much pushback against anything gay. I think that basically apart from very few people who are straighter than straight and a very few, few people who are gayer than gay, pretty much everyone falls somewhere in between. And, and the fear is, just like the NRA is worried about going on to the slippery slope, well, what if you go on the slippery slope of having sex with somebody of the same sex? Uh, maybe you're going to slide down the sliding pond and end up gay, and oh my fucking God, that is really, really frightening to a lot of people. Heck, I'm, I'm not really that frightened by it, but I will tell you that my experiences of experimenting with that have been profound, and they have shaped my identity from the inside out. Uh, it, it, it doesn't actually change who I am, but it changes how I think about who I am, and that moment where the discovery is, is being made uh, can be revelationary, and uh, there, there, 
uh, there, there is the sense of giving up of so much of what you thought was true about you. All right, so we've got this going on. And at the same time, there is this triple conjunction in Aries that, that is happening. And I've been writing lots and lots and lots and lots about this. Again, the article to look up, you can Google it or you can go right to the blog of Planet Waves, is, uh, is called Uranus, Eris, and the Riddle of the Internet, where I sum up all the, the work I've been doing uh, on the association between this conjunction, which last happened in Aries, by the way, in 1927-28. So it's 90, 89 years ago this, uh, this last happened, um, begins the electronic age. It begins the digital age. It begins the, the time when we were going through uh, the, the first um, shocking throes of identity melting down under the force of electronic media. Uh, in particular, the first radio station, the first TV broadcast, and, and the patenting of the first transistor. The transistor leads to the computer, the computer leads to the internet, and all of this is happening one Uranus Eris cycle ago, 89 years ago, and now Eris and Uranus are again in a conjunction. Uranus has gone all the way around the sun, takes 84 years, and then it took another few years to catch up with Eris and we, you know, because it's a little, Eris has moved a little bit in, in those uh, 80, 89 years. So th that's where we, that's why Uranus has an 84 year cycle, but the conjunction last happened 87 years ago. Okay, now, 89 years ago. So now we are in this new moment. And if you think about what happened at the moment of the last Uranus Eris conjunction, which was basically the tide of the electronic era began touching the toes of society only now we're compl all completely underwater now we have to think this through again and this is a controversial subject people do not like to think about what their technology does to them they all focus on the content of the technology is it a good movie a bad movie a good article a bad article a good record a bad record and there are such things as those things but but the deeper issue is what this ability of me to speak into this thing and then it comes out your computer and goes into your ear, what that's done to us, to you, to me, to society. And now suddenly, in the past few years, coincidental with Uranus entering Aries in 2010, approximately, the iPhone comes out a bit before then, but that's when these things were becoming super duper popular. Um, super, see, I have to check and see who called me, uh, right, right on YouTube. Uh, and that would be, uh, Tori Pomonte and Liz Ann Webb. I have messages from them. Hi guys, I'll get right back to you. So, um, we have, especially since Uranus entered Aries, been living in this flood zone. It's kind of like global warming of, 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 of media where suddenly, you know, there used to be such a thing as a recording studio where you recorded albums and there used to be such a thing as an album. And there used to be such a thing as a radio studio where you broadcast radio. There used to be such a thing as a camera, a dark room. There used to be such a thing as a film studio, a cutting room, an editing room. There used to be such a thing as a post office. Remember that post? I've been to the post office lately. There were stamps, there were envelopes. You could type, you could write. There used to be such a thing as pens and paper. Uh, there used to be a thing called a tape recorder. That was, that was those were cool. I was I loved those when I was a kid. I'm sure you would imagine that. Now there's biometrics. I just got into my iPhone biometrics, and your recording studio, uh, the great clock at Westminster, uh, telegraph. That's chat. Uh, there's your camera and uh, dark room, and uh, th there's even like uh, well, there's the music library that, that used to fill entire uh, radio stations record room um, make a movie or see your photo album or have a calendar all on one thing you may think this is cool and i i have an aquarius moon i think it is pretty cool i actually like this iphone too first one that i like but it's fucking confusing because what it's done is it has scrambled everything and now suddenly uh you, you are taking all your tools with you all the time you're communicating in instant time 
all the time. This is absolutely completely disorienting. And the main thing that this means, the main thing that this means, in my opinion, and it's pretty much a fact, is that we're tethered to the internet all the time. So the identity melting, uh, body identification, chaos and confusion, the warping of space and time, the shifting of, of, the, uh, of, of the senses, the super heavy dominance on the visual sense, you have to use your eyes. The telephone, oh, I forgot about the telephone. Didn't this start as a telephone? I meant completely forgot that. There used to be switchboards and ladies wearing skirts who plug things in. Has completely warped us. That is, oops, that is this. Uranus conjunct Eris in Aries. So now we're at the first full completion of that cycle, uh, it is fair to say that the electronic era has come full circle. All right, now what happens is Mars does this really rare move of stationing direct in an exact aspect to this thing. So now it's saying, well, what about Mars, the planet of I am? What are you going to do to find yourself? What are you going to do? Well, Mars is suggesting that maybe that you, um, instead of finding yourself through watching like zombie, pff, zombie killer movie, always a zombie after you, or uh, going to like murder and mayhem movie night at the local Cineplex 48 cinema, that you experience your sexuality in some real way. The thing I've been saying over and over again is I've been interpreting Mars, uh, the whole Mars retrograde process is get beneath the false religious views that you were taught by various forms of religion, New Age spirituality, uh, religion pumped into the secular schools as abstinence only indoctrination and figure out what you really feel. Allow yourself to kindle your sexual curiosity. You will be happy if you do this. You will feel better if you do this. When you, when you mix, when you, which is a natural thing anyway, when you uh, allow yourself to experience the full fusion of sexuality, your sexuality, and curiosity, letting your sexual uh, d desires be driven not so much by the need to conquer or that or have intimacy or get married, but just by curiosity. Didn't kill any cats. Curiosity never did that. But it will help you find yourself in a healthy and, and sane way and give you a, um, a something uh, organic, something biological that that inspires you to seek and to feel and to explore and to find, and that is sexual curiosity. There, there is a, um, there's a philosophy called the, the pathwork, and uh, the pathwork emphasizes curiosity as a, as a valid path to enlightenment. Now, uh, you, you, you could say, well, that's just another theory, but the, the beauty of the theory of curiosity as, as a path to enlightenment is that it allows you to express your inquisitiveness and your desire the way that you want to. And one of the things that the Pathwork points out is that sexual curiosity is the highest form of curiosity. It's the thing that you experienced as a kid, and it's the thing you're experiencing all day long but to live in polite society you think you have to suppress that but come on how often are you saying "Ooh, i bet she's nice i bet he's nice i bet what's going on underneath that dress i wonder what's going on underneath those shorts i wonder i wonder what i wonder what tattoo she's got let's get those clothes off let's find out this is sexual curiosity i'm like wow i wonder what she smells like that's my form of sexual sexual curiosity i'm at it all day long i'm i'm curious about anyone i feel like being curious about and it's highly entertaining and it leads to the sensation of not being bound up in false morality. You you do not necessarily need to act on those famous words, your, your curiosity. And the truth is you're not going to act on most of your curiosity. There's too many people to be curious about to act on it all the time. You don't have to act on every curiosity, but every now and then, maybe once a day, once a week, once a month, you may think, ah, this, this, this would be fun. Oh, you're curious about me? Well, I'm curious about you too. Why don't we be curious? about each other together. This curiosity, this force of curiosity is one of the most subversive 
emotions that there is. It, it is the very stuff of personal liberation, personal revolution, and the, the very thing that fuels art. It is the thing that lights art on fire and makes anyone's creative mind come to life. That is my take on Mars stationing direct in Scorpio in a 150 degree aspect to Uranus, Eris, and Ceres. Feed your curiosity, feed yourself, and remember that you can't eat the internet. You can't really smell the internet. You can't really feel the internet. And Ceres is reminding you to hang around with what you can feel and, and smell and taste and and dig your fingers into and feel that has texture uh, that that is uh, that, that is w w wet and earthy. There you go. All right, I'll see you uh, in some days, a week or so, with a new edition of Planet Waves TV. Thanks to Kate in the Ukraine for processing these videos. Thanks to you for watching. Please do click. Uh, what is it? Subscribe to. But remember, Planet Waves is. A, a business. We are we are an actual business, and we don't monetize uh, these videos. But get yourself over to PlanetWaves.fm or PlanetWaves.net. See the great stuff that we, my large, beautiful, talented team, and I are doing every day. There's lots of writers there, and there is also the option to subscribe because we are funded by your subscriptions and reading purchases. Speaking of, if you're born under the sign Cancer or Cancer writing rising uh, by the time you're seeing this that reading is ready okay till next time lots of love bye for now <laughs>